I want to thank you all for bringing this very, very important debate on the floor of the National Assembly. But I take a different perspective to what has happened here. You have to go back in history to understand why there was a civil war in the first place, and 50 years later, why the same people are agitating for independence. In 66, we had the first coup where it was alleged that the Igbos wiped out northern leaders in the military. Second coup, Gawan took over, and there was a lot of bloodshed killing the Igbos. Igbos were killed in the north. They moved back to eastern Nigeria. Ujuku became head of state, declared uh, a nation called Biafra. The war started. We fought for three years. The war was over. And southeastern Nigeria and eastern Nigeria, as it was called, was integrated into Nigeria. That is the background. Now, when the war was over, I asked the vice president of Nigeria a fundamental question. I, there are two questions asked. One, why did you erase the bite of Biafra from the map of Nigeria? And, and he said, he said that at the Supreme Military Council meeting, they felt Biafra would rise again. And so the federal government at the time did everything possible not to talk about the war in Nigeria. So from 1970 to the present, a generation of Nigerians who were born did not know we had a civil war. And I, have, I know a lot of young people who do not know Nigeria fought the war. This policy of being an ostrich and not addressing issues is counterproductive. If you lived in America, you know you had the Vietnam War, which happened at the same time as the Nigerian Civil War. You had the Korean War, you had the First World War, you had the Second World War. You have all kinds of wars. And they talk about it all the time. If you watch the Discovery Channel, you can see all the wars in the world. And the reason they televise these wars is so that you can learn from the mistakes of others, so that you do not become a fool and make the same mistakes and fight again. And so here we are 50 years later talking about something that could have been avoided if the federal government at the time understood the value of history. So one, we erased the civil war from our consciousness. So a generation of people do not know we fought the war or why we fought the war. They say the Igbos were marginalized, right? They fought the war, they lost. Today, they are the most industrious people in the country today. They are the richest Nigerians in the country today one of the most educated people in Nigeria today, yet, yet, they feel marginalized. If you compare the Igbo man to the other sections of the society, you would say the Igbos are very privileged because of what they have. Yet, a generation of Igbos say they are marginalized and they want to succeed and they want a nation. Well, Yes, a young generation of people who have never seen bloodshed, war, destruction, people being killed, amputated, families being divided, sure they can think like that. But what have we done as a nation to educate them about the destruction of war? Absolutely nothing. We do not teach this in our history books. We do not tell our children what war is all about. It's easy to talk about war. How many people have carried a gun in AK-47? A machine gun, a machete, how many people have carried a gun? How many people have used a gun? How many people have fired a shot? How many people? Those who talk about war, those who talk about bloodshed, those who talk about confusion, have never carried a gun. So how do they know how people die? Have they seen blood? And yet here we are debating a subject that we as a nation should understand. The educational system does not teach it, and our people do not understand it, and the federal government of Nigeria do not recognize it. And so my position is different. If the federal government do not recognize a fundamental problem in our educational system, a fundamental problem on how television is viewed across the country, then we have a fundamental problem. And we must address the problem at the source. What is the problem? We are the problem. It could be Biafra today. It could be South South tomorrow. It could be North East the other day. It doesn't matter. The problem is we are not addressing the problem that unites or divides us. And this must be addressed. Our educational system is one of the worst I've ever seen in anywhere in the world. It is terrible. Our policy on information makes no sense whatsoever. And here we are talking about an impending crisis. A lot of people forget. I know. I'll be quick. How many people remember December 31st, 1983, 
when there was a military coup. If, a lot of people forget. I was in the office of Punch newspaper, Olua Bodere. I did not know he was dying of cancer. But then he said to me, Nigeria must change and he will do whatever he, he took to bring down the Shagari administration. He did an editorial three, four days before the military coup. Front page, back page, inside front page. Within three days, the military struck and democracy ended. But the people of this country who do not pay attention to history, who do not read, who do not watch television, and to the government who pretend to be deaf, 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 deaf and dumb. Your yeah, mic. Pay attention. The government should pay attention to the least of us. They should pay attention to history. There is a way out, but to pretend and when you erase Baito Biafra from the map, nobody has a right to erase a name, Baito Biafra from the map. If it's, if it's Baito of Biafra, put it back on the map. You have no right to take Baito of Biafra off the map, put it back on the map, and let's fix our problem. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Sir Nala. Thank you very much, Mr. President, and my decision.